less than 2.2, divide by one digit divisors, check with multiplication. Video 2.1 is linked in the description when we learned about placing the first digit in the quotient. We can solve and check division problems by remembering that division and multiplication are inverse operations. They undo each other just as subtraction will undo addition. 56 divided by 7 is equal to 8, and 8 times 7 is equal to 56. The dividend here will become the product here, and the divisor and quotient will be factors in multiplication. We use division to find the number of equal groups or the number in each group. A truck driver drove 1,440 miles in three days. How many miles were driven each day? And to solve this problem, we need to divide 1,440 miles by three days. Our quotient will be the miles driven each day. So I'm going to go through this a little bit quick, and then I'm going to go through it again slower before we move on to the rest of the lesson. So we have 1,440 divided by 3. The first we do, thing we do is we ask ourselves, can 3 fit into this 1? No. Can, so we include the 4 in the hundreds place and say, can 3 fit into 14? Yes. How many times? Well, 3 times 4 is 12. So we put a 4 up here in the hundreds place because it's going, we grouped the 1 and the 4 together as 14 hundreds. So that's why it's going above the hundreds place. It didn't fit into the 1, so it's not going above the 1. It's going above the 14, okay? 3 times 4 is 12. We do our subtraction. We get a 2. Now it's this 4's four turn, turn to drop down. And we ask, can 3 fit into 24? Yes, because 3 times 8 is 24. We put an 8 here above the tens place. And 3 times 8 is 24, so we subtract 24. We get a 0. Now it's this zero's turn to come down. We ask, can 3 fit into 0? No. How many times? 0 times. And that's why a 0 went up here in the quotient above the 1's place. And 3 times 0 is 0. And, of course, if we do subtraction, we're still going to have 0. So we get 480 miles each day is what the truck driver drove for those three days. And... To check this, we can multiply the quotient times the divisor, the 480 times the 3. We do, and we get 1,440. We're supposed to add any remainder after we do this multiplication, but the remainder is 0. So yes, it equals the dividend, 1,440, which means we did our math correctly. So now let's go through this a little bit slower before we move on in the lesson. Our problem is 1,440 divided by 3. The first thing we do is use an estimate to place the first digit in the quotient. We did that in video 2.1, again, which is linked in the description. So we can estimate, we can round this dividend to something that is compatible with this 3. And instead of 1,400, we could use 1,200. And 3 fits into this 12 four times. 3 fits into 1,200 or 1,200 400 times. So because 3 fits into the 1,200s four times, that's why we have a 4 up here as our first digit in the quotient. And this 3 fits into this 1,400s about four times. So the first digit goes into the hundreds place, and we know the quotient will be a three-digit number. Because we started putting it here, we know there's two more digits. It's a three-digit number. The second thing we do is we multiply the 3 times this 400 to equal 12 hundreds. So we're subtracting 14 hundreds minus 12 hundreds. 14 minus 12 is 2. We have the 2 here. Now it's this 4's turn to come down. We ask 3 can fit into 24 how many times? Well, it can fit into it 8 times, so we put an 8 above the tens place. This is really 24 tens, because here's the ones place, see? So this is 24 tens. And the second digit goes in the tens place because we're dealing with the tens right here. 
The third thing we do is multiply this three divisor times the eight we put up here because this three fits into this 24 eight times and three times eight is 24. So we write a 24 here and we do subtraction and 24 minus 24 is zero and we ask, well, we drop down this zero. It's, it, this zero is turned to come down. See, after we subtract, we drop down the next number. So three fits into zero, zero times. So that's why there's a zero up here in the once place. And three times zero is zero. We subtract and get a zero remainder. Our quotient is 480, remainder zero. The last thing we do is check with multiplication because the quotient times the divisor, which is 1,440, plus the remainder, which in this case is a zero, should equal the dividend, and it does. So we know we did our math correctly. Finding the value of n with an inverse operation. We can use what we know about checking division to find an unknown value. And a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown number. And the dividend is represented by the letter n. So the dividend is the variable n. We have n divided by 5 is equal to 47. We need to find what n is equal to. So we think n divided by 5 is equal to 47. We can use an inverse operation and say n is equal to 5 times 47. We know if we multiply the divisor and the quotient that it should equal the dividend when we check our work. And we can use that to find the dividend. 47 times 5 is equal to 235, so the dividend n must be equal to 235. Now n is going to be an unknown remainder. We have 543 divided by 4, and our quotient is 135 with a remainder of n. We don't know what the remainder is. Now, we could do the work and do the long division to see what would end up at the end, but we know the quotient times the divisor multiplied together, then the remainder added to that product will equal the dividend. We have 135 for our quotient, 4 for our divisor. We do 135 times 4 and get 540, but this is 543, so we ask ourselves, what number is missing to make this 543? We could actually do 543 minus the 540. It would be a three. That means the remainder must be equal to three. Now we spoke about this in the last video, but it's very important, so we're gonna cover it again. If we subtract and get a greater value than the divisor, the partial quotient isn't great enough. We have 196 divided by 3, and we decide to put a 5 here. And 3 times 5 is 15. When we subtract, 19 minus 15 is a 4. This 3 can still fit into that 4 after we subtract it. We could have fit another 3. We should have used a 6 in the quotient instead of a 5. The 5 wasn't big enough. If we do use a 6, then we say 3 can fit into 19 six times because 3 times 6 is 18. When we subtract, we only get a 1. And this 3 cannot fit into that 1 until it's the 6 turns to come down. Then it would be 3 fitting into 16. So this will work. If we chose to put a 7 there, 3 times 7 is 21, we can't subtract because the 21 is too great. We should have used a 6. It would have worked out great. So after every subtraction, we need to compare the results to the divisor to continue dividing. Now, do you notice I put we could do and should do with an apostrophe V-E? I know this is supposed to be math, but one of the biggest mistakes many people make is for the contraction should have, which is supposed to be should should do with an apostrophe V-E-E, -E -E, and would have is supposed to be would with an apostrophe V-E -V -E as would have, and could have is could have. They put of instead of the apostrophe V-E. 
they write should of or would of or could of, and this is improper grammar. It's supposed to be should have as should div. It's an apostrophe V-E, okay? If N is an unknown divisor, then we have 173 divided by N is equal to 86 remainder 1. And we can think N can fit into 17 tens 8 times. And we think 17 divided by N is about 8. We know the quotient times the divisor, 86 times this N, plus whatever the remainder is should equal the dividend. Remember, when we've got a number right up next to parentheses, that means multiplication. We just learned that in the last chapter. So we have 86 times some number n plus 1 is supposed to be equal to 173. Now we could solve 86 times n plus 1 equals 173 by using the strategy guess and check. We can say, let's try the number 1 for n. 86 times 1 would be 86, and when we add the one remainder, we get 87. Well, that's not 173. That's too small. So n is not a 1. If we try to go with a larger number like 3, we do 86 times 3. That's 100, 258. We can already see that's too great. That's too big. By the time we add the remainder, we're at 259. That's definitely too big. So we can try 2 for n. 86 times 2 is equal to 172, plus that one re remainder is 173. That's just right. That means n is equal to 2. Our divisor must be a 2. Mr. Lee had 72 apples, and he put an equal amount into six bags. If he sold two bags, how many apples were left? So we think, First, we need to find how many apples were in each bag. He had 72 apples. He split them evenly into six bags. We have 72 divided by six. Six fits into the seven one time, so we put a one up here, and six times one is six. We do seven minus six is one, and it's the two's turn to drop down. So now we say six can fit into 12 how many times? Well, six times two is equal to 12. So we put a 2 in the 1's place up here for our quotient. We do our subtraction and get a 0. We have remainder 0. It fit evenly 12 times. That means there were 12 apples in each bag. We know there were 6 bags, and we know 2 bags were sold. So how we solve the problem is 72 divided by 6, which is what we did, that's equal to 12. He had 6 bags and he sold 2. That means 4 bags were left, and... 12 times the four bags that were left, that's equal to 48 apples that he had left. Now we've got 17,042 divided by 5, and I'm going to do it with you. The first thing we ask is, how many times can 5 fit into this 1? It can't. So our answer is not going to be above that 1. How many times can 5 fit into this 17? Well, I know 5 times 3 is 15, so I think it can fit in 3 times. Because we fit it into the 17, we put the 3 above the 7. And 5 times 3 is 15. We're going to write it here. And we're going to subtract it from the 17. 17 minus 15 is 2. And we bring down the next digit, the 0. Now we ask 5 can fit into 20 how many times? Well, 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So we put a 4 above the 0 that we dropped down. And 5 times 4 is 20, so we're going to subtract it from that 20. We get a 0, and now it's this digit, the 4's turn to come down. We ask ourselves, how many times can 5 fit into 4? We have a 0 here. Well, 5 can't fit into a 4. It fits into it 0 times, so we're going to put a 0 up here. And 5 times this 0 is 0. So now we write it here, and we do our subtraction. We get a 4, and now it's this 2's turn to drop down. So every time we subtract, it's the next number's turn to come down. And we do that multiplication for that partial quotient. We subtract it. We write the difference, and it's the next turn's 
to come, next number's turn to come down, see? So we subtracted, next number came down, subtracted, next number came down, subtracted, next number came down. And the number we are subtracting is whatever we said the 5 would fit into how many times? 5 fit into 20 four times. We wrote a 4 here, and 5 times 4 is 20. So that's what we subtracted. 5 fit into 4 zero times. So we wrote the 0 here and did 5 times 0 is 0. Subtracted, drop the 2 down. Now we ask how many times can 5 fit into 42? If you know your fact, uh, multiplication facts, you'd know 5 times 8 is 42. So we can put an 8 up here. So it fits in it 8 times, and 5 times 8 is 40. That's what we're going to subtract. We have 2 left over. We're out of numbers, and 5 will not fit into 2. So we have a remainder of 2. And we can write that up here next to the quotient. I know my regular subscribers have seen this many times, but most of the time I have new people watching my videos. So, to let you know, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in their correct column. And we can use it for addition, subtraction, division, like what we've been doing, or even multiplication. And it helps us keep the numbers in the column where they belong. We won't make as many mistakes that way. In our next lesson, 2.3, we're going to model division with two-digit divisors and stay focused. I'm really proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.